Hello again, everybody. So we have another gem that we have yanked out of the pit of despair tonight because, uh, well, my ADD always kicks in. Doesn't matter what I'm into. Something uh, happens and uh, I get sidetracked. Wicked. But that's okay because this is all stuff that really needs to get done. And this is another tool that will help me along finishing the planer stand build. And uh, so that's what she is. She's big, she's heavy, and she's in pieces. So I'm going to get to it. We're going to start bringing it up the stairs here. And you guys will see what it is in just a moment. Stay tuned. I'll catch you on the other side of it. All right, so this is our old Craftsman. It's a six inch. Uh, it's a uh, it's a six inch joiner. Model number one one three two zero six nine three one. Um, well, let's see where's it made. USA, gotta love it. So anyway, I know we're jumping around a lot of different projects, but um, I wanted to get this up here because I've noticed that just running those boards for our planer stand through the planer didn't leave me with a perfectly square <coughs> didn't leave me with a perfectly square timber, and I want these joints to be nice and tight. Want them to come out well, so we're probably going to use this for the other half of the planer stand. Now I have some black walnut pieces, some more of them for the planer stand. I want those edges nice and square too. So we're not going to go whole hog on this quite yet because uh, tomorrow, today uh, we were running around all. We had basketball turn, tournament for Emma today. I had to work this morning. So like a lot of my videos, I'm doing what I can when I have the time. Uh, JF commented tonight about, you know, Hammer time is over, now you can get back to the planer stand, you can get back to the insulating. Uh, just want you folks to, to understand that I work on what I can as I can work on it, as funds allow. You guys know how it is, most of you. Um, I don't have a big disposable income for this project. I'm just about out of insulation, I have to buy more. So I'm, I'm kind of doing what I can with what I have kicking around. Same thing goes for this stuff. Now this isn't a nice, beautiful, fancy joiner, but it, it actually is a pretty nice one once it's tuned in. Of course we have to shine up the top, we've got to shine up the fence on it, and then we have to do all the adjustments to make sure we're nice and square. And on this model under here, that falls under this leveling table right here, there's some adjustments. I adjusted it when I first got it, an uh, uncle of mine gave me this years ago, and I adjusted it back then nice and square. What The problem he had with it, it was off just enough to where if he tried to do a tabletop, a big glue up, a big panel, it was kind of all over the place. But um, the leveling screws underneath here, they uh, they were way out of whack. So I went through years ago and did that. But we're going to check all that again. Um, this is a nice heavy one. This is all cast iron up here. It's a really nice machine and it actually with sharp blades on it, it cuts super smooth. 
The bearings are in really good shape. There's no play in them at all, and that's not bad for old sealed bearings. They don't have any shaft movement, no in and out play. The motor spins pretty smooth. That's a pretty easy motor to get and replace if you need to. It's only like an 8.4 amp, 115 volts, not convertible to 230 volt. But it wouldn't take much to put this on a 230 volt motor. Um, but we don't really need to. So another thing that I've always liked that Delta and Craftsman are good about doing, and they make it really easy with your plugs to take this stuff apart. Now, one gripe I have, one major gripe about this thing is this, uh, oh, wow, that's smarting tonight. I carted this across the yard to the barn from the pit of despair, and it's quite a ways away from here. But uh, anyway, this stand is like a friggin' erector step. This stand is, it's friggin' junk. It's garbage. I can't, I don't like it, can't stand it. So I think after the planer stand is done, and we'll see where we're at money-wise to buy more insulation. I do have some, but not enough to finish it. But uh, we're going to see where, we, where we're at, and we might. I think I have enough lumber kicking around that's nice and dry that maybe we can build a new stand for this. And if I do that, what I'd like to do is make this motor external on it with, uh, you know, put, make some guards for it, but make it external so it keeps it out of the dust. I, I've never liked that with the woodworking tools where the sawdust, everything's down in the dust and that, that's no good. Um, this motor does have oil ports on it, which is kind of handy. I mean, it's a well-built machine, but this stand is just, it's friggin' garbage. <laughs> I hate stands like this. It's so friggin' cheesy. You know, you get a really nice tool like this and you put it on a piece of shit like this. <laughs> I just can't stand that. Hey, yeah, it's got some leveling feet on it and things like that, but that's just chintzy and shitty in my book. I like a nice, heavy stand for stuff. So the other, the other thing that JF mentioned in that comment was, um, hope you don't get too many tools moved in here before you put your finished floor down. I'm trying to set this up so everything's mobile. Everything is going to be on casters. The plywood's another thing. I think we're going to go with three-quarter inch. Uh, tongue and groove CDX plywood on this. Um, Advantech would be nice, but Advantech's quite costly, but it does make a nice, it'd make a nice floor in here. But, um, so we're going to do the plywood, but what we're going to have to do, just like everything else, we're going to have to do a little bit at a time. A few sheets here, a few sheets there. It'll probably take me 10 years. It's going to take me years to get the inside of this, this wood shop finished off. I mean, we have a ton of insulating to do. We have all the boards to put up on the ceiling, all that good stuff. So we, we don't really, uh, we just hit it as we can, guys. That's, I do the best I can with what I have. Um, and that was good, con you know, it was a good comment. There was nothing wrong, and I'm not, not upset or griping about his comment. It was a good logical comment. When are you going to finish a project? You know, like I, I said before, you know, it, it always, one thing always leads into another because you're not, I have a bad habit of taking on a project before I'm fully set up to do it. And what ends up happening is exactly what you're seeing. Everything becomes an afterthought. So you, you get into what you're doing and instead of having a good plan to do it, you just figure, well, I'll make do with the tools I have out there right now and we'll be just fine. But I'm finding as I go along, that's not exactly the case. It'd be a lot nicer to have some of this set up so we can have a much better finished product but uh so anyway that's where we're at with this we're gonna get this bolted down i'll probably stay on the top a little bit tonight shine it up we'll make sure everything's square i'm probably not going to get to sharpening the blades on it tonight they uh they're actually not too bad i put these blades on a few years ago new and they're still in good shape but they're rusted up so we want to make sure we get that rust knocked off, get a nice fine edge on them. But uh, like I said, that's not anything we really have to worry about too much tonight. But I would like to get this shined up, get the fence on it, and get moving with it. So anyway, stay tuned. We're going to keep going at it.
guys see how well we could show this here so these guys right here these are our, our adjustments to make this uh, in feed table to make it right so what I do is I get it up as tight as I can to the fence so I kind of know it's level across and then I just sit there and screw around with these for an hour or two until it's right now I checked this and uh, it wasn't quite right and of course that led into a whole ton of adjusting so we finally kind of have it pretty close and there's for the front of it right there so I get the back side done first I get that where I want it and then I start adjusting the uh, the outside so I start with this guy here I start with that one there and then I work this one and then that one until I get it where I want it. I'll show you where we're at. This is where we're at before final tightening. I know, crappy camera work. So we get it right about in there. So it's not too bad. You check it all the way down every few uh, I check it every few inches. Of course, if that fence is in good shape, it should be pretty straight and ready to go. So I'm going to adjust these down below, tighten them up, and then we're going to check it again because normally, every time I go to tighten them up, the damn things move on me. All right, so we got that pretty well set. Now I do, when I get it where I think I want it, I adjust this, uh, adjust this in feed table down a little bit just to make sure that we're staying square oh sorry guys make sure we're staying square there we go not too bad this isn't the best this is not This is not the best square to be using for this. You probably want a machine a square to do this a lot better, but it gets me pretty good to where I am. I like too to make sure that my gap's even on that table. So when we're feeding the boards on, they're feeding uh, straight into the roller, not tilted up or down at all. I mean, I guess if I was going to have anything, I'd rather have them tilted up a little bit. I get my blade kind of top dead center. So we'd be hogging off a whole lot if we were taking that much off. But our gap's pretty even there. Usually I set it to about a sixteenth of an inch. Seems to be a happy, a happy number. Kind of set it and forget it. I know the camera works crappy right now. Yeah, quite a bit more we can do. I'm getting closer. And you can kind of go by the gap between the fence and the rest of it. I mean, you don't want to live by it, but it'll get you a there we go. So that's about our sixteenth of an inch right there. But anyway, there she is. Alright, let's hear how she sounds running. Not too bad. Gotta get a new belt on it and you take care of a lot of that vibration. Let's see if I can get you a better shot here. There it is. So well, it's not too shabby. I'm going to shut the camera off and run a piece through here. We haven't sharpened the blades yet, but we'll see what we get. Pretty quiet though, really, isn't it? Well, there's another project pretty well ready to go so we can make the rest of our 
other projects a lot easier. Uh, there's still quite a few tools left in that old pit of despair. Uh, we have quite a few to go through and rescue from a few big things left down to uh, all the minuscule stuff. Um, so, yeah, there, there's quite a, quite a bit. I do have a set of new knives somewhere in that old shop for that thing. But uh, anyway, there that one is. So we can get back tomorrow. We're going to start back on the planer stand, see if we can get the... See if we can get the other side of that done. Uh, we don't have much left to do. Cut it down the size, put it together, wedge it, and do our black walnut braces. But the joiner will be getting used quite a bit for the rest of this project. And I think after the planer stand, maybe as an off project, we'll probably work on making a joiner stand because, like I said, I cannot stand that metal erector set looking piece of garbage. Um, that, and I like that one portable. That one's a little too heavy for me to move just picking it up all the time. And uh, I would like it portable. So we're going for a portable shop for the most part. Um, the big tools, everything's going to get its own stand. Even the table saw is going to get a new stand built on casters. But we're going to do them in such a way where when we are not moving it, we don't want to move it, we can have all the legs of the bench make full contact with the floor. But uh, like I said, the big reason the big reason for that is, I mean, kind of the idea when the shop gets set up, I'm kind of hoping that everything, I'm kind of hoping I get everything to a point where it's right where I want it and it can stay and live there. But you guys know how that is. That never works out that way. I mean, probably... The only thing that's going to remain stationary is probably going to be the radial arm saw and the uh, the miter saw. We might even make a nice miter, roll around miter bench. I'm not sure yet. But um, anyway, so that's what's going on. So Monday's video, this video will come out Sunday. So Monday's video will be back to the planer stand. Hopefully we can get that done this week. Another busy week with the... Uh, <clears throat> with Emma playing basketball, things like that, we're kind of kind of running a little bit. Not too bad, though. So, anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this one. And I know it's a little off topic, but uh, we're trying to get our wood shop set up. We're trying to get things so we can use it and make nice things. So this is all part of it. This all has to get done. So, anyway, have a good one, guys. I will see you on the next one.